Ah, hello, and welcome to Tour de Force Productions. An area where micro four thirds is thought to be lacking is its ability to take pictures under low light. Now, you can throw at me any sort of figures and numbers, but I have found through experience that micro four thirds is perfectly okay to take pictures under low light, like, like the one on the screen now of St. Michael and All Angels in Croydon, Surrey. Now there the shutter speed was a tenth of a second. The factor is f4. Hand holding the camera, relying on the image stabilization in the camera and the lens. But, of course, it's the ability of the technology to take a decent picture under low light. And notice also, I have not bumped up the ISO, I'm on 200. So, with the next uh, set of pictures, I hope to show you my technique in taking photographs under low light, hopefully without noise, maybe just a little bit, but hopefully none at all. So let's move on to the next picture, shall we? The important thing to remember when shooting at night is that the exposure meter, and it doesn't matter whether you are in matrix, center weighted or spot, it does not read accurately black. It tends to render them as a grey. Therefore, to overcome that, you must use the exposure bias. And you'll see that I've got a minus figure of 1.3. If I don't do that, then we don't end up with a black sky. The one thing surprising about this picture, which you may have noticed, is that I'm using the entry-level camera into the OMD system. Not the most expensive, and the same applies to the lens. Yet, I think it's done a fantastic job. It just shows that you don't need the most expensive camera to take a picture like this, a sixth of a second. Oh, I forgot to tell you, it's handheld. And of course, there's no image stabilization in the 14 to 42 pancake lens. Therefore, I'm having to rely on the image stabilizer in the camera only. In this night shot of St. Catherine Docks in London, not far from the tower of the last picture, but it's taken on a different day. And here there is some tone in the sky. It was difficult to balance it with the foreground. There's really not much brightness there overall, although it might look it. There's quite a difference between the exposure of the foreground and that of the sky. And I've had to do some jiggery pokery in Lightroom and this is about the best I've come up with. And of course, the other thing you must remember that when you are lightening dark areas in post-production, you can inadvertently add noise to the photograph. So one has to be careful about that. This shot is more successful. It's taken, what, an hour after the last one I've moved into Regent Street, London. Of course, now the foreground is much brighter. Therefore, it is easier to get a dark sky. And also, I would spot meter properly off the bus. The other thing to watch here, of course, you've got movement and you have to wait for a moment when everything is stationary. Otherwise, you're going to have a blurred bus. The shutter speed you notice is a fifteenth of a second. So I waited for that bus and the other traffic to pause a while and then I took the picture. Unfortunately, too, not too many people got in the way. That, of course, can be another problem.
Have you ever been to Sky Garden? Thoroughly recommended. If you're not quite sure where it is, it's in that walkie-talkie building in London. You know, the one that looks like a giant mobile phone from the outside. And the top level is open to the public. It is or was free, but you have to book ahead. Now, a problem with this shot, which is not, I hope, obvious. In fact, I hope you can't see it because, you know, to protect me from falling over the edge, then I'm having to shoot through glass. So therefore, what you do is to position the camera as close to the glass as possible to cut out imperfections in the glass and, of course, reflections from elsewhere in the building. And there is rather a brilliantly illuminated bar just behind me. I'm not telling you where, but I did have to erase through Photoshop using the cloning tool one or two highlights where it had picked up the highlights from behind me from that bar. But I think it's worked. And notice also I'm underexposing by two old stops and keeping the ISO at 200 for quality. The Shambles in York is a honeypot. Go there during the daytime and it will be full of people, a little less at night, and you can get some fantastic pictures, again hand-holding. Notice I've had to bump up the ISO to 400. I don't like doing that. Yes, I know we read articles in books and magazines about these fantastically high ISO figures, but if you're selling to the publishing market, they don't like it. I couldn't avoid raising it to 400, and I would hope that my clients would appreciate that. Fifteenth of a second shutter speed handheld with the help in this case of image stabilization in camera and lens and exposure bias underexposing by 1.7 stops. Terrific contrast, as you can imagine, between the illuminated windows and the dark outside. I had to do quite a bit of work in Lightroom and don't forget when you lighten dark areas you are running the serious risk of adding noise. That is something that has to be watched critically. Maybe if you blew this picture up as much as possible, you might find a little bit, but it's unavoidable. Perhaps for me personally, the most valuable area of low light photography is inside churches. I'm not a religious person. Can't even say religious, can I? Never mind. I did sing in the choir, incidentally, at my local church as a boy soprano, so thankfully I can leave that to your imagination. Again, I've had to bump up the ISO to 400. It was quite dark in the choir area of Lincoln Cathedral. As you can see, the shutter speed was a third of a second and the use of tripods was not encouraged. Yes, I'm hand-holding yet again with the wonderful image stabilization offered by the 12 to 100 Pro lens and also the EM1 Mark II camera. There was a little more light in Southwark Cathedral and I've managed to keep the ISO at 200. Nevertheless, the shutter speed is a third of a second. Now, here's a useful tip. I'm using a very wide angle lens, eight millimeter. That would be 16 in film or full frame. It is easier to hand hold a shot with a wide angle lens than say standard and certainly telephoto. Certainly the latter because camera shake with your bodily movements is exaggerated. Whereas that is not the case with 
an extreme white angle as we see here. Another shot with the budget camera we had earlier at Tower Bridge. Now the problems here are quite different. Although Micro Four Thirds offers more depth of field than larger formats, because I'm quite close to the subject, then I need to control depth of field by using a smaller aperture and a fairly wide angle lens. It's 14 millimeters, that's 28 in film or full frame. And I probably exercised here the hyperfocal distance by focusing, manually focusing about a third of the way into the image. I've spot metered towards a highlight. Uh, that roof would have gone dark on the original picture, but I've carefully lightened it in post-production. And by the way, I have cheated a little bit. I'm not exactly hand-holding the camera this time. I'm resting the camera on something. I can't remember now what it was, but you get the picture, you get the idea by looking at the scene. Being a National Trust member for many years, I was absolutely delighted when they allowed us to take pictures inside their properties, as here at Chartwell, which was the former home of Sir Winston Churchill. So you've got to hand hold the camera, time to brush up your technique. A little tip incidentally, often useful that when you come to press the shutter button, hold your breath. Not joking, but I think somebody was joking to me one day when they said, ah Derek, another tip is to press the shutter button between heartbeats. He might have a point actually. Quite a bit of contrast. Um, sticking to 200 ISO 15th of a second and again in post-production I've adjusted the huge variation between highlights and darker areas of the picture and again I must stress in lightening the darker areas of the picture you are running the risk of increasing noise and if you look in that wooden panel on the right hand side you might see a bit of noise. I don't know, I daren't look, but at least the main part of the picture is okay. And really, it would be quite easy to crop that, uh, that wooden uh, pillar away, wouldn't it? Another National Trust property, and of course, these same strictures apply. Notice incidentally, I'm using program. Now, a lot of people confuse program with auto. It's not the same thing. Auto is when the camera decides what it thinks is best for the photograph. Program is not like that at all. It does, yes, sort out the exposure automatically, though you can override that, as you can the white balance and exposure bias and various other things. I'm being a little lazy by using program, same with inside churches, because what the camera is going to do when the level of light is low is that by default it's going to use the largest aperture that it is allowed to use so that it can give you the fastest possible shutter speed because the camera will automatically assume, or the manufacturers do, that you are going to hand hold the camera. And that's the reason why I use some um, program. Yes, it's laziness, but if you're working quickly, particularly in a place like this where there are other people, then you can't dilly-dally about, can you? Otherwise, somebody's going to walk into the picture. Well, for my last image, I take you to jail. I've been sent to jail and I don't have my get out of jail free card. Joke if you play Monopoly, incidentally. Maybe this is an appropriate place that some of you would like to send me. Because as has been often commented with my other programs, I don't follow the general 
drift. It's like joining a queue and saying and doing what everybody else does. I like to show you an alternative way. And that's what I hope I have done with this particular program. If anybody says to you, Micro Four Thirds is no good at taking pictures under low light, that is, I hope I have proved to be rubbish. Have a go yourself. It'll take a little while. There's one thing I cannot teach you, and that is experience. It might take several goes. And also, you have to be prepared to combine your knowledge of working a camera with your chosen software, be it Lightroom, Photoshop, or some other brand. So long as you know how to use it and you can combine it with your expertise with a camera, then hopefully in the not too distant future, you can produce images like this. I wish you luck and I hope to see you next time. Thank you for looking at this program.